My father once told me that respect of truth comes close to being the basis for all morality. Something cannot emerge from nothing, he said. This is profound thinking if you understand how unstable the truth can be. From Conversations with Muhadib by the Princess Irulan. Welcome to Reading Dune, a podcast where we read Dune by Frank Herbert and talk about it. If you're a Fremen or a first-time reader, this podcast is for you. My name is Caleb Paul. And I'm Evan Diaz. And together, we're going to read Dune. Yeah, we are. And we're together. With you. If you're watching the live stream, that's my hand on both both screens. It's very exciting. Stop, you're being obnoxious. I'm sorry. <laughs> Technology is amazing. Okay. I mean, we do. I if okay. If somebody somebody asked a question to me, totally not off topic here. They asked a question: If I could live in any decade, like what decade would I want to live in? Uh-huh. And the answer is one hundred percent right now. Even though it's twenty twenty currently, but we have it better than everybody else. Yeah, we have these little rectangles that we carry around in our pockets. And if I want, I can use my rectangle to see my mother's face and say hello, mother. You are far away, but you are also in my hand, <laughs> in my rectangle. <laughs> Man, we got the whole world in our hands. It feels yeah. like a fun fun time. Yeah, no, I wouldn't go back at all. This is right here. Yeah. I mean, if I had a time machine, I'd maybe go to Woodstock. Also, you have to be able to get back though with a time machine. Right, right, just right. stay once and then. Exactly. But like, how many time travelers do you think were at Woodstock? To be honest, As I think they were, they were at least 35. <laughs> 35% of people at Woodstock were time travelers. That's why they had such big crowds. Right, exactly. No one had seen anything like that. <laughs> anyway, back to Dune. This is a podcast where we read Dune by Frank Herbert and talk about it. I promise. It's not a time travel like that. <laughs> okay. Um, Let's see if you got anything for this quote. Oh, that chapter is so weird. Um, so we know, right? Attack on Arakeen. Um, shields go down. Things come in. We follow Jessica and Paul, right? We follow Yui and Doctor, or no, and uh, yeah, we follow, follow the Doctor and the Duke. Mm-hmm. But we don't know about anybody else. Yeah. Um, Duncan picked up Paul and Jessica. Yeah. We don't know about Thufer and we don't know about Gurney. Right. Um, or Idaho. We don't know about Idaho. Right? No, he picked up um, Paul and Jessica in the desert and then peaced out again. Uh, Remember the run? Uh, it's right there, but it's actually Idaho hanging out the side. Right, right, Get right, in. Right, 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 right. And then he dropped them off in the tent. They had their mental breakdown. He has to peace out because he has to yep. come back with yep. the kinds. Yep. All right. Last time on Reading Dune. That's <laughs> <laughs> exactly it. Um, so we're now with Thufer. Yeah. Mr. Manhattan himself. Which is just a real sneaky on Frank's part because he ended the last chapter by saying uh, in that instant, uh, Paul heard the low hiss of a gliding aircraft, saw the dark shades of ornithopters above them. Thufer was sitting in it, and I'm like, no, what happened? You you guys, uh, you people who have read Dune know this. You get used to um, cliffhangers. Yeah. That's how it's going to happen. It seems like a pattern. <laughs> I laugh because I know, and I laugh because you don't know. Okay. So, Thufer. What's happened with Thufer? What has happened with Thufur? That's a great question. So the shield went down. He wasn't in Arakeen at right, the moment. He right. was in a um, someplace outside of Carthag. Yeah. Probably with a troop of people. And shields went down. He probably saw all the ships just coming down from space. Yeah. Thufur also, at the beginning of this, has the, the beginning, blah, the beginning of this chapter kind of feels like, uh, a scene in a lost episode where it's like person sitting there, they have a little bit of conversation and then it's like, 
and then it goes into a flashback. Oh, yes. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. That's, that's the vibe that I got from the beginning of this. So who is Duper sitting with here? He's sitting with a Fremen. Ta-da. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, this very strange Fremen. Well, strange to us and well, to Thufer. Well, I mean, how many Fremen have we met? We've met Kynes, right? Yeah. And we met Stilgar. Right. We which, met, yeah, okay. And we liked them right away because right. they were like... But Kynes was like kind of... A, it was like a... He had one foot in, one foot out. He was an accepted Fremen. Yeah. That was the, the vibe that he gave. Because he, he was too proper. We never met like a... Said. a, a this is an unnamed Fremen. Pure blood Fremen. Yes. All right. So they're sitting in this this uh, cave. All right. Um, and let's see. And how it is with 20 men in this cave, half of which are injured, wounded. Out of like 300 that he started the night with, right? Is right. that what it says? Uh-huh. Jeez. So they've been fighting all night. To, they got out and they got to this point. And um, they had a thopter with them at one point in time. But it got injured. It didn't work. Sure. And they had to um, get rid of it. But okay. So I want to start with um, Thufur seeing what's happening. So the shields go down. He sees people, the ships entering the atmosphere. And he thinks it's it's a raid. The Harkonnens are testing. But then the report followed faster and faster. Two legions landed at Carthag. Five legions, then 50 brigades attacking the Duke's main base at Arakeen. A legion at Arsent. Two battle groups at Splintered Rock. Then the report became more detailed and that there were Imperial Sardaukar among the attackers. Two legions of them. And it became clear that the invaders knew precisely... Which way to arms to send where? Precisely. Supreme intelligence. Piter's plan worked out to a T about yeah. how to take this over. How its shocked fury had mounted until it threatened to smooth over his Mantec capabilities. He just got so pissed and shocked he couldn't compute anymore. Yeah. The size of the attack struck his mind like a physical blow. And the size of the attack... Um, they say that it would have been, what is it? 50 years of spice harvest from Arrakis to pay for this. Of the entire profit. Yes. Right? So, like, all the side deals, all the, like, stuff on the books, everything. Everything. Um, the entire spice income of Arrakis for 50 years might come, well, what he knows of. Right. Um to pay off all the bribes and everything else. Little does he know how much actual spice is on Arrakis. Um, <laughs> so usually he would think there'd be a full attack, there'd be 10 brigades, but now there's 100 brigades. This is bigger than anything he could have possibly imagined. And the first person he blames after re realizing his immense failure is the Lady Jessica. Right. Is he still thinks she's the traitor. Right. Uh, they had that whole conversation. He wasn't listening. That sucks. Yes. Super. Come on, man. He's just got it in his head. And he, and like she, she said in that conversation, like, well, don't let your emotions get in the way. And here they are well, getting in the exactly way. That's exactly what he's doing. Yeah. Yes. And it's probably why after a long night of barely losing so many men barely being right. alive yeah um and this is where the fremen then kind of turns to him and i think they met the fremen in there so it says uh the fremen says your man gurney halleck and part of his and part of his force are safe with our smuggler friends so, so gurney's Gern good gurney's alive and then uh super super thinks so gurney will get this help plan we're not all gone. So there's like a hope. It's like, okay, Gurney made it, but he's probably going to leave. Or that seems like an assumption. He assumes he can leave. Well, it says will. 
So Gurney <laughs> will get off this hell planet. That's what he thinks, but he's been wrong a lot lately. Right, right, right. <laughs> right. Was Paul Paul said in uh, his mental breakdown chapter, like, no, no one's getting off. Right. Because the, if anybody does get off, um, they'll let the Lanzer add that start a car involved and the emperor is involved and then they're all to attack. So, so they, even with the smugglers, they couldn't get off if they wanted to. No. Yeah. They're, no one's leaving. Yikes. Um, so, yeah. So then how it glanced back at the huddle of his men. He started the night with just past 300 of his finest. Of those only remained and 10 of them were wounded. Some of them slept, some just stood up, some were leaned against the rock, they just sprawled out. The last doctor, the one they'd been using as a ground effect machine to carry their wounded, had given out just before dawn. Um, I just learned what ground effect means. What? It's actually a thing. It's when you take an aircraft and you fly it really low to the ground, and you make really stubby wings, and then you just go really fast, and you can just like save fuel and just like skip across. Oh. But they usually do it over water because trying to do it on land would kind of suck because you would crash instantly. Right. With the amount of changes in elevation. Right. So they were probably just taking this over the sand and like skipping it over sand dunes, just like trying to get away. Interesting. So yeah, you're using it as a ground I effect that. machine. I know. I just learned. That. I was like, holy cow. Um, Frank's time in Vietnam actually helped us out here. <laughs> just picture Frank writing ground effect on his typewriter and going into a PTSD <laughs> episode. <laughs> Poor guy. Anyway, I'm sorry. Hang on. Um, so there. Uh, how it had a rough idea of their location, maybe 200 kilometers southeast of Arakeen. The wind traveled way between the shield wall and the CH communities was somewhere south of them. Mm. The friend across from how it threw back his hood, still suit cap, ready to reveal a sandy hair and beard. The hair was combed back from the high, thin forehead, and he had unreadable, totally blue eyes of the spice diet. The beard and mustache were stained at one side of the mouth, tear matted there by pressure of looping the catch tube from his nose plugs. The man removed his plugs, readjusted them, and he rubbed the scar beside his nose. He's just doing all these casual things that are so strange. To yes. Cooper. You know, he's like, oh, God. Yeah, you know, kind of like. Ready to talk to him just and like. hanging out, just kind of like, oh, let me fix this thing. Okay, put it back on, you know. But Thufer's like, whoa. <laughs> who he's are been, you? What is, yeah. what, who are you? Yeah, what are you? And the Fremen just speaks very plainly. If you cross the sink here this night, you must not use shields. There's a break in the wall. He turned on his heels, pointed south. There, it's open sand down to the erg. Shields will attract a, uh, he hesitated, worm. They don't come often here, but shields will bring them every time. How it, he thinks, he said worm. He was going to say something else. What does, he, what does he want of us? Dude. What was he going to say? That got me with like some very, very heavy curiosity. I have no idea what the, what else he would have said. I was like, wait, what? <laughs> There's another option. Like what? Ah, oh, that, that really got me. I was kind of reading. Like, wait, what is he? What, is he? what does he mean? What is he is talking he gonna about? Is he going to say it? <laughs> I got Frank Robert is just like, no, no, pay attention. He's, he didn't say something here. Yeah. Um, and then Howard just, again, he's just doesn't know what to do. He's like very stuck and pissed off and he can't, he keeps thinking about the Sarda car. Like, Oh my gosh, there's so many things happening. And, um, like he was like, I could never would have been in my calculations. Why would I, why are they here? And the Fremen then talks again. He says, do you wish to go to the smugglers? So, so far, the Fremen, has, like he said, by the way, Gurney is with the smugglers. Uh, don't cross over there. If you do, please don't bring shields. And uh, do you want to go to this? Like, what are you doing next? Do you yeah. want to go to the smuggler's? Where we'll do you want to go? What are, what are you doing? Yeah. I'm just hanging out here. What do you want to do? And that's where Thufer says, well, is it possible to go to the smugglers? The Fremen says, the way is long. 
than how it thinks. Fremen don't like to say no. I know told him that once. Right. Okay, okay, okay. So it's a long story, but Caleb and I have traveled the world a good bit in our uh, don't, adventures. Don't brag, Evan. And there are cultures, especially like in Asia and like uh, parts of Southeast Asia and like S- South Asia, like India and, and mm-hmm. Nepal and stuff, where they literally don't like to say no. So if you get in a taxi and you're like, hey, can you get me to this hostel on this street? They'll be like, yeah, no problem. Get in. And you get in and they drive you around the city for three hours because they don't know where you're going. They don't know like where you want to go. They're like hoping they figure it out because they, it's like really shameful for them to say no. And that's hard for us as like Americans and Western people to understand, but like that's a very common thing like in their culture and something that as like an expat living there, um, you know, the people that we met that are, that are expats there, they got to figure out the nuances of conversation. Like when somebody knows what they're talking about, when they don't know what they're talking about. So like that just goes to show like, that's a very realistic cultural difference to have um, with somebody in a situation like this, like even in the real world. I mean, yeah. And that's, you're going to see that a lot. It's just cultural differences. They can, the Fremen and uh, Fufu just miss each other through this whole chapter. Right. They're, they're speaking the same words, but differently. Right. And like not understanding like what, what, yeah, let's, let's get into it. <laughs> it's re- like really interesting. This, the ways that they keep missing each other. But I love how the Fremen said that there is no, no, right. Cause if you know, you, you'll die. You just, Right. Okay, sure, we just keep moving. Right. Sure, yes, we can go there. The way is long, but yeah, we can. Yeah. And, okay, yeah. <laughs> so then how it said, you haven't told me whether your people can help my wounded. And then the Fremen says, they are wounded. They're wounded. <laughs> and then how it says the same damn answer every time. We know they're wounded, how it snapped. That's not the Fremen. He says, peace, friend. What do your wounded say? Are there among you who see the water need of your tribe? And how it says, but we haven't talked about water. And then the Fremen, I can understand your reluctance. They're your friends, your tribesmen. Do you have water? And how it says, not enough. The Fremen gestured to how it's tunic, the skin exposed beneath it. Yeah. You were caught in siege without your suit. You must make a water decision, friend. Yeah. <laughs> and then how it says, can we hire you? you can help us. Wait, wait, wait. The Fremen says, he shrugs, you have no water. He glanced at the group behind him. How many of your wounded would you spend? Do you know what he's talking about yet, Evan? Yes. Okay. Go explain. So. Explain the water, like in in the the bodies. Like yes. Removing the water from the bodies, um, because like if you're wounded out here, don't have much of a chance. And so, like, water is survival. So if you have wounded and like, he says it later on. It's like a wounded man knows when he's like too wounded especially in situations like this. So like, are they going to make the decision to sacrifice themselves for the betterment of, as he says, the tribe, you know? Oh yeah. 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 <laughs> yes. Okay, cool. That was a good answer. Sorry. Um, no, that's exactly what's happening. And he, he, I love how he leaves the personal responsibility. He's like looking for the responsibility. Like I, these people have to die. We must need, we need their water to survive. Right. You don't have any water. Do you want me to do it? You do it? Let's have them you, decide. You got to do it. You got to do it. Someone's got to do Someone, it. You don't have water. I'd like to help you, but you can't pay me. Yeah. <laughs> like, what's happening? Um, How it doesn't get this. He's not as smart as Evan is here. <laughs> how it fell silent staring at the man. He could see as a mentat that their communication was out of phase. Word sounds that are not being linked up in a normal manner. And I love it. He goes, I am Thufur Howitt. He said, <laughs> I can speak for my duke. 
I will make a promissory commitment now for your help. I wish a limited form of help preserving my force long enough to kill a traitor who thinks herself beyond vengeance. Right? He's got like... Re no, no, you're not understanding. Yeah. Let me just speak slower so you get it. Right. I love <laughs> that they're speaking the same language. <laughs> you know, when you're like doing hand signals overseas to try to get somebody to understand that you like want a sandwich is one thing, <laughs> but like you're speaking the same language fluently and still missing each other at that level is like bananas. So of course the Fremen doesn't understand what he's talking about and said, "You wish our side." In a, you would are siding in a vendetta? I think he's like, oh, you wish our siding in a vendetta. He's like trying to like put it in yeah. his words. And he's like, uh, kind of a vendetta I can handle myself. And, and then the yeah. Fremen scowls. How can you be responsible for your wounded? They are, uh, they are their own responsibility. What is the issue, Dufer Hawat? You must have me take that decision. Would you have me take that decision away from you? He puts his hand on his weapon. Ooh. Like, I'll do it for you. It's okay. You let me know. Yeah. I'll take care of it. And I like he says his name back to him. He says, he goes, I am Thufer. <laughs> water Hello, Thufer Howard. <laughs> the water is not the issue, Thufer Howard. <laughs> Don't <Yeah. worry. laughs> How it tensed up. Is there betrayal here? And the Fremen demanded, what do you fear? These people and their discording directness. How it spoke cautiously and says, there's a price on my head. The Fremen, ah, ah. removed his hand from his weapon. You think we have Byzantine corruption. You don't know us. <laughs> the Harkonnens have no water enough to buy the smallest child among us. Dude. <laughs> because it's, ah, uh, the wealth is in the simplest thing. The wealth for them is in the water. They're like, Spice, what spice? You want spice? We got spice. <laughs> we got all the spice. It's like, it's like how does economics work, right? The supply. Money, money, you can't drink money. No, we need to drink things. Yeah. God, Water so cool. is what we need. Water is what we pay for. <laughs> oh, man. Yeah, we don't, spice. Spice means I don't get it. And then how it is still, but they have the price of Guild Passage, more than 2,000 fighting ships, like, well, how yeah, much? They just spent 50 years worth of this planet's economy on just attacking us. Like, how much more could you want? He's like, you're still not getting you're it. You're not getting it. You're not, you're not in your still suit yet. You don't know how, like, vital the yeah. water is. Ooh. So how it then says, all right, let's come back. We both fight Harkonnens. <laughs> Should we not share the problem as a way of meeting the battle issue? And the Fremen says, oh, we are sharing. I have seen you fight our opponents. You are good. There have been times I appreciated your arm beside me. <laughs> and then how it, say where my arm may help you. Fremen, the Fremen said, who knows? I love it. He says it, <laughs> he says it a couple times. He's like, who knows? <laughs> how it's just like, ugh. Gosh. Say how I can help you. Literally, you're a burden at this point. Now, you can't help me. You don't have water. <laughs> you don't have water. Yeah. I can help you if you need my help. But, right. Right. The, the Harkonnen or the Fremen says, there are Harkonnen forces everywhere, but you still have not made the water decision or put it to your wounded. <laughs> and finally, finally, how it says, will you show me your way? Show me, show me what you would do. Yeah, the the Arakeen way. Yeah. And then the Fremen, he sneered, stranger thinking. So he's he's doing the same math <laughs> as Thufur's doing, because like Thufur's like, oh, this guy's not getting it, and <laughs> the Fremen is sitting there like, stranger thinking. <laughs> 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 they're they're literally both in the exact same situation like we are missing each other here how yeah. can i help you he pointed the fremen pointed northwest across the cliff top we watched you come across the sand last night he lowered his arm 
You keep your forces on the slip face of the dunes. Bad. You have no still suits, no water. You will not last long. <laughs> you are dead unless you do something, pretty much is what he's saying. Oh yeah. Um, and then Howard says, the ways of Arrakis don't come easily. And the Fremen says, true. But we've killed Harkonnens. And then finally, Howard demanded, what do you do with your wounded? And the Fremen responds, here it is. Does a man not know when he is worth saving? Your wounded know they have no water. He tilted his head, looking sideways at Howard. This is clearly a time for a water decision. <laughs> Both wounded and unwounded must look at the tribe's future. How it? The tribe's future? He's thinking to himself. The tribe of the Atreides? What, what, what are you doing? So he forced himself to ask the question he'd been avoiding this whole time. Have you word on the, my duke or his son? Unreadable blue eyes stared upward into Howitt's. Word? Their fate, Howitt snapped. Fate is the same for everyone. <laughs> <laughs> Literally so funny. It's not, it's not like I didn't laugh reading this, but it's so funny how they're like completely missing each other. Yeah. <laughs> fate. What are you talking about? Fate. Fate's the same for everyone. Your duke, it is said, he has met his fate. And to the Lizano Liza Gaib, his son, he is in Liet's hands. Liet has not said. And uh, do you know who Li Liet is? Um, so at first they said that it was like the Fremen kind of deity person. But then it was implied that Kynes was Liet, right? Yeah. At some point. That's that's how much I know. Howitt only knows the first part of that, so he only thinks that Liet is could be a deity of yeah, some sort. Yeah. So it should I know more than that? At this no. Point? Okay. Cool. No. Cool. There's a whole big reveal. So you're okay, good. Cool. Um. But yeah, Howitt's thinking like fate is the same for everyone. So he hears the Duke has met his fate. He's died. As in Dupal. That's in God's hands. This is pretty much what he's seeing. Right. Um, and then Howitt thinks, I knew the answer without asking. He glanced mm -hmm. back at his men. They were all awake now. And they had, of course, been listening right. because what else are they going to do? The conversation was kind of heating up and getting interesting. <laughs> <laughs> and now they were starting to realize that there was no returning to Kaladin, and now Arrakis was lost. So how it turns back to the Fremen and, and tries to find a, a connecting point. <clears throat> Have you heard of Duncan Idaho? The Fremen said, he was a great, he was in the great house when the shield went down. This I've heard no more. This is where he thinks that Jessica dropped the shield and let in the Harkonnens. And then he thinks back to their moment when they were going at it um, in a battle of wits. And he's, he thinks that because I was the one who sat with my back at the door. How could she do this when it, it meant turning also against her own son? She couldn't. Stop it. <laughs> <laughs> she couldn't, and she, she didn't. Did. Right. Like, but he's got his prejudice so yeah. far up, who knows where, that he can't get past it. And then Howitt tried to swallow in a dry throat, but he's not wearing a still suit, so he can't get any water for that. It's just being evaporated. Yeah. Um, but then he said he talks about to the Fremen again and says, "When will we hear about the boy?" The Fremen responds, "We know little of what happens on Arakeen." He said he shrugged. Who knows? <laughs> and then Howitt, you have ways of finding out. And what's the, the friend is not going to say no. So right. he says, perhaps. Yeah. And then he, and then he poses a question to Thufur. He says, tell me, Thufur Howitt, do you have knowledge of the big weapons the Harkonnens used? And then Howitt thinks back to the artillery, the yep. artillery that was used because all of the, the men had treated, um, retreated into the caves and the artillery used to knock them in. Right. To, the, the, the Fremen guy says that any man who retreats into a cave which only has one open opening, deserves to die. Fair. 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 Um, 
But we go on that uh, Liette wants to examine the weapon. <laughs> so how it was like, sure, why don't you just go take one? And the Fremen says, yes, we took one. We have it hidden. We're still Gar can study it for Liet. And where Liet can see it for himself if he wishes. But I doubt he'll want it. The weapon is not very good. Poor design for Arrakis. And then Howitt has his, bla- his brain blown out one more time. You took one? Yeah. It's possible? The Fremen. It was a good fight. We lost only two men and spilled the water for more than a hundred of theirs. <laughs> Thumbs up. It was great. We had a good time. Very cool. <laughs> fun, fun fighting time. And then how it, I love it. How it, like for the rest of the whole thing, how it and like some of the guys are like, wait, you did what? <laughs> yeah. Are you serious? Like they're com- consistently surprised at their like fighting capabilities. Right. And this is casual for them. Right. Um, there's a, the rumor that even a Fremen child is dangerous, right. a- as dangerous as an adult. Like, they're just, it's where you get the idea of savages. They'll just take anybody out. Sardaukar is supposed to be the number one fighters in the Imperium. Right. And there were Sardaukar at every gun. And so they killed a, a hundred people only only lost two. Holy cow. And then he says, he, he's, he right after that, he's like, we would not have lost two except for those others fighting beside the Harkons. And that's when he goes into talking about the Sardaukar. And that's when it clicks. He goes, oh, those are Sardaukar? Uh, it was a good night indeed. Sardaukar. Which legion do you know? <laughs> He's like a fanboy right <laughs> now. They are good fighters. I would like to fight them again. <laughs> the Sardaukar are probably thinking the same thing, to be honest. Because they got their butt whooped. <laughs> and then how it's like, we, we, don't, we don't know what we don't know. And the Fremen... Mused to himself, Sardaukar. Yet they were wearing our common clothing. Isn't that not strange? <laughs> he's, like, <laughs> he's like trying to get a grasp on the situation, which is like, uh, Super understands it like strategically. Yeah. And he's like, is that not strange that they were wearing the clothes of the Harkonnen men? Yeah. You know? <laughs> and it's just a big slap in the face Super's like, to Thufer. Yes. It is. How are you? <laughs> and then how it says the emperor does not wish it known. He fights against a great against a great house. And he's like, but you know, they're starting a car. And yeah, then how it, how it gets. Emo here is like, you know, start a car. And he goes, who am I? Like, what do I matter at this point? I'm <laughs> just a guy in a cape. <laughs> but he said, what he says, honestly, who am I? And the Fremen goes, you are Thufir Howitt. <laughs> <laughs> you have told me multiple times your name. This is your name, Thufir Howitt. <laughs> We've established what your name is. It is Thufir Howitt. That is who you are. The best part is I'm siding with the Fremen on this, like, yeah. the entire yeah. way. <laughs> yes. Well, we've learned in time. We sent three men to captain be questioned by Liet's men and then how it's like wait you ca- captured Sardaukar yes three of them only three of them they fought well <laughs> and they're like they're I feel like Thufir is thinking like I wouldn't stand a chance against a single like the puniest Sardaukar right you captured one and he's like no well oh we only got three of them you know it's very matter of fact this oh. whole time. And then how it thinks back to Duke Lido's plan, which was to like link up with the Fremen somehow. If we, right. we can make the this place, the world good for all people who live on it, we can all thrive. And then the Fremen are such good fighters, we could finally beat off anybody who tried to come in. But yeah. he didn't have enough time for that plan to fully be realized. But of course, how it thinks that they could have trained them and given them weapons. And I, I want to argue that the, the Fremen don't need their help. Yeah. <laughs> they, they really don't. You do, I don't know what how it could bring to any of them at this point in time. Right, 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 right. I mean, maybe like they have, they, the, the Fremen have the desert power and obviously the fighting 
you know, prowess, whatever, whatever we want to say. But the Atreides had the political side. Right. And not the fighting power. So the two of those together could have made a much bigger uh, impact on the Imperium as a whole. And the Atreides had the... There was a rumor out there that their fighting for the Atreides army was gaining on Sar- in Sardaukar like levels. Oh. They were getting really good. Okay. So like how it thinks, oh, we were so good. With the Fremen, we could be even better. Right. But, you know, that doesn't really work. Mm-hmm. Um, and then the Fremen kind of like looks back at Fufer and says, perhaps you delay because you worry over Lizan El Gaib. If he is truly Lizan El Gaib, harm cannot touch him. Do not spend thoughts on the matter which has not been proved. And then how it says, I serve the Lizan El Gaib. His welfare is my concern. I've pledged myself to this. A Fremen. You are pledged to his water? Yeah, he perks out. He's like, oh, you're pledged to his water? Who? Yes? And then how it kind of like glances around uh, and then says, to his water, yes. And then the Fremen. You wish to rec- return to Arakeen? To the place of his water? <laughs> to, yeah, yes, to the place of his water. He's like trying to speak yeah. uh, Fremen here. And the Fremen stood up, seated his nose plugs firmly, and says, Why did you not say so? Why, why did you not say it the first? It was a water matter. I'm like, oh, let's go. Yeah. How it motioned for his motion with his head for his aid to return to the others. With a tired shrug, the man obeyed. And the Fremen says, There is always a way to water. And that's when somebody comes running up. Thufer! Arky just died. <laughs> you made them sound so dweeby. <laughs> These are soldiers. Thufer! <laughs> you do it then. They look like lost boys. But they're coming from a cave. I feel like Lost Boys at this point in time. Yeah, fair. Um, the Fremen put a fist to his ear. The bond of water. It's a sign. He stared at Howitt. We have a place nearby for accepting the water. Shall I call my men? Um, the aide returned to Howitt's side and said, for a couple of the men left wives in Arakeen. There, well, you know how it is a time like this. The Fremen still held his fist to his ear. It is the bond of water, Thufir Howitt? He demanded. Howitt's mind was racing. He sensed now the direction of the Fremen's word, but feared the reaction of the tired men under the rock overhang where they where they understood it. The bond of water, Howitt said. Let our tribes be joined, the Fremen yeah. said, and he lowered his fist. So then, let's see, da 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 with that, with that signal, four men slid down, dropped down from the rocks above them. They darted back under the overhanging, rolled the dead man into a loose robe, lifted him, and began running with him along the cliff wall to the right. Like ninjas. Boom, right there. It was over, it was over before Howard's tired men could gather their wits. And that's when the men are like, wait, what are they going to do to him? Yeah. What are they doing with Arky? And then one of the other guys was like, the Fremen don't bury their dead. Like they've got this prejudice against what's happening. This isn't, this is a foreign right. way well, of doing you know, how it. Howard had just said, like, they're taking him to uh, bury him. Right. Yes. Like, uh, we don't know what's happening. But then the Fremen reassures them that paradise were sure for all men who died in the service, service of Lizan Al Gaib. Right. Right. Like, don't worry. He is in good hands. Um, Howitt's men advanced, angry looks on their faces. One had captured a laser gun. He started to draw it. Howitt barked, stop right there. These people respect our dead. Customs differ, but the meanings are the same. They're going to render Arky down for his water, the man with the laser gun snarled. Um, And the Fremen says, is it that your men wish to attend the ceremony? <laughs> yeah, he's missing how this is offensive in any way. <laughs> he's like, you have a water problem. We are getting water. <laughs> what is happening? Why are you upset? You, want to, you can watch if you want to watch. <laughs> yeah. um, 
Yeah, they're just missing each other completely. Yeah. But the Fremen reassures them that we treat your comrade with the same reverence we treat our own. This is the bond of water. We know the rights. A man's flesh is his own. The water belongs to the tribe. So they're turning Arky into jerky. Yeah. Jerky. Water jerky. Arky, Arky jerky. A slushies. Arky slushies. Wait, what? Nope. They're, they're literally taking his blood out. Oh, I thought they were taking the water just out of his body completely. Yes. Probably through draining of the blood. Okay. Okay. There is a ceremony we're going to see here that they'll do it, but not yeah. here. Okay. Here cool. is still foreign because we're on like the Howitt side. I just thought they were going to put him in a thing and spin him around and all the water was going to come out and he was going to just be a be a little mummy. Um, you got, yeah, that could. Maybe. They have a place they do it nearby. Well, I guess I'll. Yeah, I don't. Too. I think so. Um, but now Thufur is like, well, now will you help our wounded? Um, and then they're like, the Fremen like kind of like nod to this. And then how it, the aide, the other um, Atreides dude comes up and says, are we buying help with Argy's water? And how it said, not buying, we've joined these people. This is where the men kind of murmur, customs differ. Customs differ. <laughs> Halfway happy. <laughs> and then uh, how it begins to roll, relax and says, uh, they'll help get us to Arakeen, right? Which is probably where they want to go. I don't know why they would want to go there, though. Because it's blowing up right now. Right. It's, it's obviously not safe. See all the ships that flew down? They're not right. safe at all. And the Fremen said, we will kill our Conans. And he grins, and Sardaukar. <laughs> He's so jazzed. <laughs> I literally smiled real big while I was reading that. <laughs> it was like, because it says, like, he grinned, and Sardaukar. Like, he's so pumped. Anyway. All right. <laughs> he stepped backward, cupping his hand between beside his ears and tipped his head back, listening. He lowered his hands. An aircraft comes. Conceal yourselves beneath the rock and remain motionless. The men obeyed. How it, or the Fremen took Howitt's arm and pressed him back with the others. We'll fight in the time of fighting, the man said. He reached beneath the robes and brought out a small cage. There's, there was a bird under there. No, it wasn't a bird. It was a bat. Yeah. It's a tiny black bat with blue within blue eyes. The Fremen, the Fremen stroked the bat, soothing it, crooning to it. He bent over the animal's head and allowed a drop of saliva to fall from his tongue into the the bat's upward turned mouth. The bat stretched his wings but remained on the Fremen's open hand. The man took a tiny tube, held it beside the bat's head, and chattered into the tube. Then, lifting the creature high, he threw it upward. The bat swooped away beside the cliff and was lost to sight. The Fremen folded the cage and thrust it beneath his robe. Again, he bent his head, listening. Their quarter of the high country, he said. One wonders who they seek up there. It's known that we retreated in this direction, how it said. One should never presume one is the sole object of a hunt, the Fremen said. Watch the other side of the basin. You will see a thing. And then some time passes. Well, let's talk about that bat real fast. Um, yeah, I, I had nothing on that bat. No, but it was just interesting how like they he dripped the saliva, like, the, the presence of water it motivates individuals, including animals here. Right. Um, my little friend carried his message. He's a good messenger. Day or night, I'll be unhappy to lose that one. And so now they kind of are all watching down the basin. And a file of plotted figures emerged from a break in the opposite cliff headed across the sink. To Howitt, they appeared to be Fremen, but a cautiously inept band. He counted six men, making heavy, going it over the dunes. The ornithopter's wings sounded high to the right behind Howitt's group. The craft came over the cliff wall above them, and the Atreides thopter with the Harkonnen battle colors splashed on it. The thopter swooped towards the men crossing the sink. This is what Paul said last time, is anything that moves, they go after. 
Um, the Thopter circled once over them in a tight curve, came back for the dust-shrouded landing in front of the Fremen. Five men swarmed from the Thopter, and how it saw the dust-repellent shimmering of shields, and in their motions, the hard competence of Sardaukar. Ah, they used this as their stupid shields, the Fremen besides how it hissed. He glanced toward the open south wall of the sink. They are Sardaukar? They are Sardaukar, how it whispered. Yeah. Good. Good. <laughs> the Sardaukar approached the waiting group of the Fremen in a enclosing half circle. Sun glinted on the blades they held readily. The Fremen stood in a compact group, apparently indifferent. Abruptly, the sand around the two groups sprouted Fremen. They were at the ornithopter, then in it, where the two grounds had met at the dune crest, a cloud, a dust cloud partly obscured the violent motion. So they just like popped out of the sand and ambushed him. Nice. So probably the people running were running to this one spot. Yeah. So that they attracted the thopter and they brought it right there. Yeah. So sick. Um, the Fremen, besides Howitt, then says they left only three men in the thopter. That was fortunate. I don't believe we had damaged the craft in taking it. And behind behind Howitt, you hear one of the men go, "Those were Sardaukar." Did you? And the Fremen looks back at him. Did you notice how well they fought? <laughs> <laughs> how it took a deep breath. He smelled the burned dust around him and felt the heat, the dryness. Yes, they fought well indeed. <laughs> they captured the Thopter, took off with a lurching flap of wings, angled upward to the south in a steeping wing tucked climb. So the Fremen can handle Thopters too, how it thought. On a distant dune, the Fremen waved a square of green cloth once, twice. More come, the Fremen besides Howitt barked. Be ready. I'd hope to have us away without more inconvenience. Inconvenience, Howitt thought. The two more thopters swooping from the high in the west into the area of sand, suddenly devoid of visible Fremen. Only eight splotches of blue, the, bar the bodies of Sardaukar and Conan uniforms remain at the scene of the violence. The another thopter glided in over the cliff wall above Howitt. He drew in a sharp breath as he saw it, a big troop carrier. It flew with a slow spread winged heaviness of a full load, like a giant bird coming to its nest. Uh oh. In the distance, a purple finger of a laser gun beam flicked from one of the diving thopters and it laced across the sands raising the sharp trail of dust. The cowards, the Fremen besides how it rasped. The troop carrier settled towards a patch of blue-clad bodies. Its wings crept over the full reach, it began the cupping action of a quick stop. <clears throat> how its attention was caught by a flash of sun in the meadow of, to the south. A thopter plummeting there in a power dive, Wings folded flat against its sides. Its jets a golden flare against the dark silvered gray of sky. It plunged like an arrow towards the troop carrier, which was unshielded because of the laser gun activity around it. Straight into the carrier, the diving thopter plunged. <laughs> Boom! Kamikaze style. The flaming roar shook the basin. Rocks trembled from the cliff walls all around. A geyser of red-orange shot skyward from the sand where the carrier and the companion thopters had been. Everything was in flames. It was the Fremen who took out that captured thopter, Howard thought. He deliberately sacrificed himself to get that carrier. Great mother, what are these Fremen? <laughs> <clears throat> the Fremen then, like, bumps elbows with him. A reasonable exchange. One of them for, like, a full troop carrier of... Sardaukar, probably. He, he killed 300 people, at least. Right. Boom. Then he started to step out from the rock-shadowed concealment. As he, do, as he does that, a rain of blue uniforms come over the cliff wall in front of him, falling in low suspenser slowness. Uh. In, this in this vanishing instant, Howard had time to see what they were. Sardaukar. Hard faces set in a battle frenzy that were unshielded and carried a knife in one hand and a stunner in the other. A thrown knife caught Howitt's Fremen companion in the throat, hurling no. him backwards, twisting him face down. 
Howard only had time to draw his own knife before the blackness of the stunner projectile felled him. And thus... Dang it! ...ends that chapter. That is, like, the most disappointing, like, <laughs> and abrupt ending to that chapter. Because I just, like, love that Fremen with all of my heart now. And he just, like, boom, dead. Gone. Dang it! We didn't even get a name. We just got... No. Unnamed Fremen. And he's probably my favorite character so far. Yeah. He is hilarious. Who knows? Oh, man. <laughs> well, I mean, it, that's our first real glimpse into who the Fremen are. Right. Uh, how foreign the world in the Imperium is from their world. Yeah. Completely. And they don't really care about what happens in the other world. They're just trying to survive. Right. Um, yeah. That's nuts. Well, that was a crazy chapter. That was genuinely a crazy chapter. Uh, if you want to hit us up on Twitter, you can do that at Reading Dune, or you can email us, us any cool comments or things we messed up, or if this is really glitchy. Uh, Reading Dune at gmail.com. Yeah. Also, send your favorite chapter or a favorite moment. Yeah. Send us a video or an audio recording explaining, like, hey, my name's blah, blah, blah. I am from this place. And my favorite part so far has been the dinner party or the... the... When uh, when Thufa realized how much the Baron spent. Right. Like the full realization of the Piter's plan realized. Right. Whatever your favorite part is, we want to... A, we want to hear it. B, we want to put it on the show. And have everyone be able to share their favorite part of this year's uh, books so far. And no spoilers, please, because I don't know what's going to happen next. I'll be like, my favorite part's the end when blah, 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 blah. <laughs> okay. Don't worry. I won't, uh, too. I won't do that. I won't do that <laughs> to you on purpose. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. It will definitely be an accident. Um, but thank you, as always, for reading Dune with us. And stay spicy. Bum, 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 bum.